It is our very last lesson, official lesson in chemistry. So we've gotten pretty far, and this is a big one. What we're going to do now is we're going to be looking at those rate laws that we talked about, and we're going to be able to try and figure out how to derive some things like um, half-life based on the different orders of those reactions. So what we do is we consider these to be time-integrated equations. So one of the things you're going to need is to have your calculators out, and that's going to be for the... Um, the sample questions that we go through, which is going to be a different video, by the way. Make sure your diagnostics are on for that because you will need that. Okay, so here's what we end up seeing. You have a sheet in front of you, and it's pretty tiny. And up at the top, maybe you want to highlight some things. If you look, you will see there's a zero order, a first order, and a second order reaction that is discussed. The way, the, if you look at the, what is really the backside next to the sample questions, that's where the zero order reaction is discussed. Then if you flip to the other side, you've got first and second order. So what I would do is I would highlight the order just so that it's pretty easy for you to figure out, or maybe just even write it again right next to it, zero, first, and second. And then maybe even highlight these equations because the really nice thing about this is that these three equations and their equation numbers I don't remember exactly what they are but those e three equations will be given to you so um, you will be told that zero order is this equation first second order those are the equations for it what you will not be told is the rest of the stuff that we're about to go through. And so I had recommended to people, everybody got out their own sheet of paper, and they are going through this derivation process now. So we're going to go ahead and start with the zero order reaction. So make sure you find that on your sheet if you're following along with it. But maybe you can even just tuck that aside if you want and uh, write on your own notebook paper. So what I want to do, my goal in this, is I want to be able to solve this for a half-life equation. If you remember, by definition, after one half-life, you have half of your original amount of substance remaining. So let's think about that. This is my reaction that I've got right here. So after one half-life, I'm going to have half of my original amount remaining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this amount, this concentration, to be half of my original amount. So one half of my original amount. Well, I'm going to keep everything else. I'll kind of keep going with this. The next thing that comes along is the original amount. So I'm subtracting that just for math purposes to make sure it's obvious as to what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and throw a 1 in there just so you guys know mathematically what I'm going to be doing. And that equals my negative k. And remember, we're deriving this for half-life. So now what our t is going to be equal to is actually the half-life. So do you guys understand what we just did? I want to make sure that's obvious. That I am changing my t to t one-half. Well, what happens after one half-life? You have one-half of your original amount remaining. So that's what we, um, that's why we changed it around like this. So all I'm going to do, I think everybody's allergic to this, everybody's sneezing. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and solve this for t one half, and we're going to say one half of our original amount minus one of your original amount equals negative one half of your original amount, and that's going to be equal to negative k times t one half. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just solve for our t one half. So t one half equals a um, couple different, you could say negative one-half a naught divided by negative k. Well, that just comes out to be um, a naught over 2k. So. Okay, so here we have our first equation that we have derived. That is our half-life equation for a zero-order reaction. I'm going to go ahead and come back to this, and we're going to talk about what this would look like graphically for all of these, but I think I want to derive our half-life equations first. So now we go to our first order reaction. Here we have natural log of A over natural log or over A naught. So in this situation, we're going to do the same thing where it becomes anywhere where we have an A, 
since we're talking about half-life, we're going to say that that is now one-half of our original amount divided by our original amount. And over here, this becomes negative k times t one-half, changing the same variables. Our t becomes t one-half, our a becomes one-half of our a naught. So we're just going to do the math and try and solve for our t one-half. Well, in this case, these variables are the same. So those cancel out. So it becomes the natural log of one-half, so the natural log of 0.5, equals negative t, n negative k times t one-half. You can solve for that. You could punch that in your calculator. Um, you know what, before we do though, let's just go ahead and change it around this way and say t one-half equals natural log of 0 0.5 divided by negative k. Now we can plug that into our calculator and what you end up getting is you get a negative value, you get negative 0 0.693 divided by negative k. So it's going to be the same thing as saying t one-half equals positive 693 divided by k. And we've got two of them done now. So we've got our first order reaction half-life equation solved. Moving on to our last one, which is going to be a second order reaction. Same thing. Wherever I see an A, I am going to change that to one half of my original amount. And um, where I see, and then this is going to remain the same. But my t becomes t one half. So this is the same thing as saying two over a naught minus one over a naught equals k times t one half. So now we've got 1 over a naught equals k times t one half. So we can take that and solve for our t one half, and that is going to be equal to 1 over k a naught. So there we go. Your math teachers would be so proud of you. There we go. We have our last uh, half-life reaction equation solved for, and that's for the second order. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the original one that we looked at, which is the zero order, and we're going to try and figure out what that would look like graphically if we were to set it up at equal to an equa uh, the equation of a line. We could figure that out. So I'm going to go back again to my original equation that I see up here. And I want to think about what this would look like graphically. In all of these cases, every single case, we're always going to have time on our x-axis. But what's going to change is what goes on the y-axis. It's going to be based upon the concentration of um, after a given amount of time. So in this zero order reaction, I see that my concentration, just the concentration of A, is what would go on my y-axis. And the reason being, we're going to take this equation and make it turn into the equation of a line. So it's going to be equal to y equals mx plus b. So when I take that and change that around, my y, again, is going to be my concentration, and it's going to be equal to my mx plus b. Your x is your time. There's your, your x. So it's going to be equal to negative kt plus your original concentration. So there is our equation of a line. What would that look like if we graph that up? Well, again, we've got our these all labeled. We know that our slope is going to be equal to negative k, so a negative value on this, what we would expect for our slope would be that negative k value, and then our y-intercept is going to be that a naught. 
So that's going to be right there, your original concentration. So we could do the same thing for all of the others. We go to our first order. And again, I'm going back to this equation right here. I want to put this in the form of y equals mx plus b. So one of the things that you have to remember here is that when you're dividing this, this is the same thing as saying the natural log of a minus the natural log of a naught equals that negative kt. So when we go through that math, we end up getting the natural log of a equals negative kt plus the natural log of a naught. So you graph that up, you would have time down here, and on our y-axis now, it's not going to be the concentration at a, it's going to be the natural log of the concentration of a. And again, you have a negative slope. So it's going to be like that. There's your negative k. And this little intercept right here is going to be the natural log of your original concentration. And our last one. Here we are doing the same thing. We are taking this guy, this equation. We're going to put it into y equals mx plus b. So it becomes 1 over our, our concentration equals kt plus 1 over a naught. Graph that up. You still have time on your x-axis. But now on your y-axis, you're going to have the reciprocal. You're going to have 1 over the concentration of a. And what's worth noting here is that this is the first time that we actually have a positive slope. So your k value is positive, and this intercept right here is 1 over a naught. So hopefully, all we really did was just rewrite the notes that you were given in class. So if you look at that paper, you're going to see that everything that we just did was really written down for you in, on that piece of paper. So it just kind of helps describe where that information came from. So hopefully that makes more sense to you now. Okay, in another video, I will go ahead and um, do the example problems for you guys.